flashback triple delay is every delay at extreme. We've taken the highly acclaimed delay algorithm from Flashback X4 and basically tripled it. So what you get is three 100% independent delay lines that you can use simultaneously for almost unlimited creative possibilities. So why three delays? Well, all the way back to the very first tape echoes, both musicians and engineers have known that running several delays at the same time can give you some amazing musical results. Hank Marvin used a Meazzi tape echo for most of The Shadow's classic tracks, and Pink Floyd wouldn't have been the same if David Gilmour hadn't made genius use of his multi-hit Benson Echo Rack. Flashback Triple Delay can be used to create everything from hyper-realistic recreations of classic multi-hit tape echoes like the Benson Echo Rack and Roland Space Echo to designing your own complex rhythmic delays. So how does it work? Well, it's very simple. Flashback Triple Delay has three presets where you can store your favorite presets, and you have the ability to turn one, two, or up to three delays on at the same time. A key part of getting multiple delays to sound great is getting them in sync, not only with the tempo in general, but also with each other. Flashback's tap tempo switch is designed in such a way that it'll dictate the tempo of all the active delays. This makes getting the delays synced up a breeze. To make sure your creative potential isn't limited in any way, we outfitted Flashback Triple Delay with no less than 16 subdivision options. Subdivisions makes it easy to nail even complex delay rhythms. Just tap quarter notes into the pedal and the delay will be repeated in the subdivision of your choice. Each of the three presets in Flashback Triple Delay can be stored with its own unique subdivision, meaning that if you engage all of them and tap, you can have them follow the same tempo but with different subdivisions. To add even more flexibility to this delay powerhouse, we've even added a serial parallel switch that allows you to choose whether the free delay lines sit in parallel or serial. Dating all the way back to the legendary 2290 dynamic digital delay, TC Electronic has been synonymous with amazing delays. Flashback triple delay follows in that tradition and is capable of producing a wealth of different and great sounding delays from classic tape echoes over analog delays to vibrant lush digital delays. All of these great sounds are not mere emulations. We collaborate with some of the greatest guitar players in the world, the guys who know tone better than anybody, and ask them to create their own signature sound using our proprietary tone print technology. Whether you want to try tone prints from Brian May, Steve Morse, Andy Summers, Joe Perry, or one of the many, many other tone print artists available is up to you. But trying out new ones on the ever-growing list of tone print artists couldn't be easier. Just download the free tone print app for Android or iPhone and beam the tone print directly into your pedal for your guitar pickup. No cables required. But there's even more to tone print. If you have a specific delay sound in your head that no pedal has been able to recreate yet, you can design it yourself using the tone print editor. The tone print editor is free and is available for PC, Mac and iPad. And it lets you become the pedal designer with access to tons of hidden parameters, the ability to change the range and what the knobs do. So basically you get to design your own custom delay pedal from scratch. Like all our tone print pedals, Flashback Triple Delay feature our true-to-tone concept. This means that the pedal is true bypass with an optional buffered bypass and has analog drive-through. Analog drive-through means that your dry guitar signal passes through the pedal analog, unaltered in any way, even when the pedal is on. Flashback Triple Delay takes everything that's great about Flashback and TC delays in general and multiplies it by three. 
So if you're a serious delay addict, you owe it to yourself to try out this pedal. Hi everybody, welcome to this Music Mentor Series online class. We are here today at Drum Channel Facilities with Tor Mogensen from TC and Russell Gray from TC Electronics. So thanks for being here guys. Thanks. You're welcome. Brad. So today we're going to talk about the Flashback Triple Delay, the Guitar Center exclusive pedal, uh, revolutionary pedal. Nobody's doing anything like it and it's a real cool unit. So first I want to introduce Russell. Russell, you're a okay. senior clinician with TC. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with them and how you came to, to start working for them, where you come from. Absolutely. A little bit about my background is that I've been playing, obviously playing guitar for quite some time. Uh, I'm from Toronto, Toronto, Canada, and I play in a group up there called Classic Albums Live. That's uh, where I started, and we recreate classic rock albums, note for note, cut for cut, live on stage. So we all wear black, there's no fancy light shows, it's all based on the music. So, I mean, we obviously don't look like, or I don't look like anyone in, let's say, Zeppelin, but... We, we basically recreate the albums note for note, no backing tracks. So that, that's my back background. So I've got a pretty good handle on coming up with tones, sounds. Uh, it's not just the notes that have to be perfect, it's the sounds too. So anything from guitars to amps and then into gear and effects and all that kind of stuff, recreating classic rock stuff. Yeah, you would have to have a real nice, wide, versatile uh, you know, oh, array yeah, of yeah. tone crafting skill to be able to do something like that. But for sure. And then... Uh, Moving forward into the TC land, I started demoing and doing trade shows and uh, conventions and, and demoing the TC gear using a lot of the same sounds that I use live um, with, with the band. And that kind of just sprung forward into now. So now I'm with the senior clinician with TC, so I travel around uh, with our VP of sales to all the guitar centers and we do training, in-house training. So Awesome. Yeah, it's great. And of course, Tor, you're our uh, resident Denmark expert and you're also the executive vice president and pedal nerd at TC Electronics. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, where you come from with TC and maybe a little history on TC as a company. Yeah, I mean, um, I've been with TC for quite some time and I actually started out as a web developer um, around 15 years ago or something like that. And at that time, and we can kind of, kind of tie that into the TC history a little bit as well, because TC started... Um, in 1976 as a pedal company. So two brothers uh, from our little town and village in, in Denmark were playing guitar and decided that the chorus pedal they had didn't sound w good enough. And they were uh, really geniuses at electronics, so they created their own unique uh, chorus pedal called the Stereo Chorus Flanger, which we still produce to this day. Um, and the way that thing typically happens is that they made one for themselves. A couple of friends heard that, thought it sounded good. They made some more and suddenly you have a business. And over the course of the years, they made more pedals. And then we slowly drifted into the studio market and really became the go-to brand for studio stuff. So anything from high-end um, audio studios for cutting you know, famous albums, have TC gear on them all the way back to the 80s. Um, and also a lot of movies have been using TC gear to create um, uh, 5.1 sounds like Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, movies like that. Um, but at some point, Somebody decided that it was time to get back into guitar, and uh, for some weird reason, they decided that I would be the right guy to kind of head that department. And I have to say, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. I kind of picked up some stuff along the way, but we have some really, really cool engineers. So I'm kind of the guy who comes up with weird ideas and have somebody else actually do the hard work. The visionary, if you will. Well, you could say that, yeah. So um, we're, we're, you know, we're here today to talk about delay. But yeah. before we get into it, you guys have actually been extremely gracious in... in uh, giving away a flashback triple delay to some lucky uh, watcher with us today. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask a trivia question. We're going to pick a winner at random. You need to email your answer to info at drumchannel.com. Um, and the question is, for the winner, you, the winner will receive a triple delay. The winner will announce them at the end of the show. And the question is, how many different subdivisions of delay does the flashback triple delay have? If you pay attention, you might catch the answer throughout, but... Um, 
That's the question. How many different subdivisions of delay does the flashback have? Please email your answer to info at drumchannel.com. And with that, tell me about delay. And where do, where do we start with delay? Well, I think delay is actually one of the first effects to, to come about for guitar or pretty much for any kind of uh, musical uh, instrument. You can say vocals or whatever. Um, and it all dates back to the early 40s and 50s. And it, back then, it was really tape machines that you modified to create echoes or, or delays based on that. And um, you know, a lot of us knows that somebody like Les Paul uh, were dabbling with electronics like that to, um, to basically be able to play multiple tracks of himself to kind of create an almost an orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, around his, just his guitar. And from there, you know, it kind of snowballed into more and more different genres. So Scotty Moore's classic use of slapback echo with Elvis. Uh, Chet Atkins, and all the way up through, you know, you can say through, through history, delay has played a crucial role, especially for guitar players and pretty much everything else as well. Um, and the first early ones, um, the tape echoes, had a great sound and they have been used, you know, back in the day and actually all the way up to almost today, there are still great guitar players, you know, using tape echoes and they have a very particular sound. Um, so examples of that, I already mentioned Les Paul and Scotty Moore, Eddie Van Halen, another famous user of classic tape echoes, Eric Johnson, David Gilmore. Um, and what you can say is that because there's, it's a low fidelity uh, on, on the tape, so it has a very peculiar sound. It colors the notes in a certain way, which some people like, some people don't, but it's, you know, it's its, its own unique thing. And it's kind of, it has this kind of nasal uh, kind of take to it. So when you play something, the first couple of repeats, will have a natural sound, but then it'll slowly get more and more nasal and more and more mid-rangey because the fidelity or loss of fidelity... Start losing frequencies on both mm -hmm. ends. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and the other thing is because it's actually a physical tape that's rolling around, um, if it speeds up or slows down just a little bit, you'll get what's in the hi-fi industry is known as wow and flutter, which is basically pitch changes. So you'll get little wobbles, which can actually be quite cool on guitar because you get this sort of chorusing effect. Right. Um, and, you know, I could talk about this a lot, but I think the best way is actually to get Russell yeah. to play a few examples of some classic uses of uh, classic uh, tape echo riffs, so to speak. Yeah. Russell, take it away. So I'm using the tape setting that's built into Triple Delay. So it gives the, the, the warble, that wow and flutter that Tor is talking about is, is there. You can hear it on the repeats. So, for example, Andy Summers would have used this type of sound for... So you can hear that type of tone. You can hear it, it almost sounds like there's a chorus pedal on at the same time, but it's not. It's just the the wow and flutter effect of tape, and and it's it's emulated quite well in the triple delay. Uh, the next, the tour mentioned that Eddie Van Halen also was a pi pioneer, and I'm a huge fan of Van Halen in general, as Tor knows. Um, but yeah, Eddie was obviously echoplex on almost everything, especially live. Uh, same kind of thing. I'll switch over to uh, the second type of example here, turn on an overdrive. So again, this is a really short, quick delay, so. So you can hear the repeats there and it's kind of Exactly what you're saying, kind of a nasal type of quality to the Yeah, definitely, and I can to, definitely to the hear the chorus-y kind of sound. Well, yeah. It's not like full chorus, but it definitely sounds like there's some influence. Yeah, yeah. Another, another fun thing about that is that because the bandwidth is so narrow, um, it actually works quite well in front of distortion, which is how Eddie used it as well. It's just, mm. you know, mm -hmm. guitar into a tape echo and then into a crank marshal, and typically that wouldn't sound that well, but because the bandwidth is so narrow, you can actually use that. Still, uh, yeah, and even some modern players today still use that type of sound. Uh, Eric Johnson's another one of our favorites, and, and it's a different take on the same type of sound. You can hear it on the repeats; it's the same type of tape. So 
so that was nice. kind of the that's kind of the tape um, yeah. the tape sound so to speak but tape echoes are really hard to maintain they have a tendency to break down we have a really cool old one at tc and usually i get a couple of days work out of it then it you know it snaps the tape or you know something happens to it um, so obviously uh, manufacturers were looking pedal manufacturers were looking for a way to get delays without having to make you with all these big machines that broke down all the time um, and the next step was what using something called pocket brigade chips and it's going to be too uh, too nerdy to get into exactly what it is but it's basically an analog way of storing delays and it's these little chips that pass the delay signal on Kind of like if you have firefighters yeah. passing buckets of water. <laughs> That's where I got the name. Yeah, exactly. Passing the so if you imagine these firefighters passing buckets of water along, and they have to do it quickly because there's a fire somewhere, they'll spill a little bit. Each firefighter will spill a little bit before it passes on to the next one. So if you have a very long line of firefighters, by the end of it, you'll have lost a lot of water in the bucket. And it's exactly the same thing that happens in a bucket brigade chip because you lose fidelity along, along the way. So the longer delay times you have on an analog delay, the more dark and murky it'll get. And that's obviously, that can be a cool thing, but it can also be a drawback if you want something that's very pristine and nice. So analog delays in general have this kind of dark, um, a little bit muffled kind of sound to it. Um, so don't know if you have yeah. an example of that, Russell. Yeah, so again, I'll use something that's fairly, actually this was probably the early 80s, so still before the, the advent of digital delay, but very dark sounding. So it seems like you would mostly hear that on stuff where you wanted a shorter delay time because as you started to get uh, longer delay times, it would kind of influence your tone a little more than you might yeah, want Yeah, exactly. Plus, I mean, there's just a limit to how many of these buggers you can line Absolutely. up. Absolutely. So, I mean, in general, and that goes both for tape echoes and for analog echoes, the delay times are fairly short. So, obviously, uh, you know, Russell was just playing this cool um, YouTube example here. But the problem with that also is that if you want to do something where you use delay in that kind of rhythmic, creative fashion that somebody like The Edge did, um, or still does for that matter, um, if you want to do that live, you're suddenly in trouble because you have to bend down and tweak the sound. And if you wanted to get exactly the right timing, that can be pretty hard on, on an analog uh, delay or a tape echo for that matter. So with the introduction of digital delays, suddenly that became a possibility. And that's actually where TC kind of stepped into the, the history because we made arguably the first digital delay. And to this day, it's still considered the industry standard and the must have pedal. And it's, it's a classic, it's called the TC2290. Um, and basically what, what we did back then was that we kind of looked at all the problems that were you know, inherent in, in analog echoes and in tape echoes. So that is exactly what we talked about, the sound quality. Uh, reliability, uh, delay length, and also the, the lack of presets. And all these things could be solved with, um, in a digital delay because you can have all these things. You can have absolutely, totally pristine delays. You can have tons of presets. You can have something that is re very reliable. Um, but what we decided to do as well was that we wanted to make it the ultimate delay machine. So apart from the fact that it has every feature under the sun, um, we also set up so designing something that sound-wise just couldn't be better. So we actually designed our own um, AD converter uh, on something called a one-bit uh, conversion, which is this insanely uh, complicated thing to do and also very expensive. Um, but it basically made the 2290 sound amazing and it still does to this day. I, there's tons of people still who use it and they're being they're being uh, sold on eBay because we can't make them anymore. Yeah, and you find them in studios. Yeah. Like a lot of yeah, high studios yeah. will have them. You, you, you know, you'll you yeah. know, you find they're very in demand, absolutely. Yeah. And it's actually doubled as a looper as well. So and exactly as you said, you know, studios, live sound engineers, guitar players all kind of fought over that. So when we introduced it, there's also a ton of guitar players who kind of jumped onto that because it's just such a, you know, the sound aside, just the ease of use and, uh, and the possibilities you get with a digital delay um, were just too obvious to not to ignore. So 
guys like uh, the Edge switched to 2290s and another at Cork unit as well. Uh, Robin Ford, John Petrucci used to have three of those in his rack. Um, so tons of different users have been playing the 2290 over the years. And we actually, to this day, it's still that core algorithm that we developed way back in 1985 or something like that, that we use as the basis for all our delays to this day because it's just that good. Well, it's smart if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure. So, you know, we get into the digital age in the, in the mid-80s when everything kind of started going digital and everybody thought that keyboard music was going to be the way of the future. So where did, where's delay gone since then? I mean, there's tons of stuff happened, and this is actually kind of where we, we go now with, with flashback triple delay, which is what we're actually talking about today here. Um, because what this is really all about is just creating really great sounds and giving the users the opportunity to get the sounds that they need. Mm -hmm. um, so the flashback triple delay takes all the stuff that we've you know, pioneered in the 2290, but it also actually takes all the stuff that comes early on the tape echoes and the analog echoes and just brings together in one package. Um, because we know that guitar players, they love to get that kind of old vintage vibe as well as getting those pristine sounds. So, you know, we talked about uh, getting those kind of clear, uh, totally unaltered delays and the edge is, is like the classic example of somebody using that and using another thing that's really beneficial with, with with digital delays is the fact that you can tap the tempo. Mm -hmm. So now you can actually have delays that sync up with the music, which was really, you could do in the studio, of course, but if you wanted to do that in a, in a live situation, that was really, really hard. That's why you saw people ha who would have, you know, four, five, six reverb units, and each one would be at a different tempo. So exactly. You could, you know, right. yeah. go through the... And if the drummer drifted even a little bit, you'll be screwed anyway, mm. so... <laughs> So I don't I love, know if you of course can... I love how yeah. being a drum channel we have to blame yeah. the drummer for drums. But <laughs> the drummers are always right on time, of course. So uh, now on to the flashback triple delay. I don't think are were you going to play an example? Yeah, I, mean, I could play a, a couple of things that would, to kind of wrap up what Tor's been talking yeah, about. Yeah, let's where do the, it. And yeah, the twenty two ninety exactly is that uh, what what came up, sprung out of the whole tape and um, analog era. And it kind of fixed a lot of the, the things that guys didn't like about that. So one of them, the crystal clear delay, and you can put a bit of chorus around it, and the Edge was a pioneer of that. And, what, and also what was cool is that it, they expanded the amount of delay time, so you weren't just limited to 600 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds anymore. You could expand you know, to 22 seconds and 32 seconds, and, and uh, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. So you, they really opened up a whole uh, area of things, sonic things you couldn't do before. And, the Edge was huge with that because he used his delay, he used a dotted eighth note delay uh, as a rhythm to, to write parts. So his delay became a, a writing tool, which yeah. is quite cool. Um, so that's a dotted eighth note delay. I could type, uh, tap in a different tempo. So that's an example of a dotted eighth note delay. So the Edge would maybe, maybe he'd tap it. Uh, Maybe slow it down. You might do something like. Uh... Of course, the one that they're most known for is probably Street Seven No Name. So if I tap that tempo in, so 
So it gives you a great example of the really pristine, it's, the, the delays aren't dark anymore like they were with the tape delays and the analog delays. Now they're exactly a, a, an exact replication of what's coming out of the amp. And you can get really rhythmic with them and, and you two and others have created entire you know, category, uh, uh, categories of you know, legendary tunes using delays. Their yeah. whole tone is, yeah. is essentially based off of Around it, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty cool. So, so one of the things that, you know, Talking about the edge, talking about some of these great guitar players who had multiple delays in their racks to, you know, to be able to play different songs. One of the things that also happened was that they actually started stacking them. So you would have two delays on at the same time to get more rhythmic options instead mm -hmm. of just that one regular kind of, you know, echo valley kind of thing. So you'd get these kind of rhythmic things going on. Um, and this is actually something that dates back all the way to the early tape echoes we talked about before because some of them, those actually had multiple tape heads so they could play back what was on the tape at different timings. And there were some guitar players who were really good at doing that. And that is actually what was the basic idea for the flashback treble delay because this is the first pedal that actually allows you to have three different delays going on at the same time. So what we've done is we've taken the, you know, the super, super cool 2290 algorithm that we've developed and developed and refined over the years. And we basically have three of them running inside the flashback triple delay at the same time. So when you create a preset, you can actually turn more than one preset on at the same time. And that will give you some really, really cool options. Not to mention, um, as with all of your, your pedals coming out now, it's tone print enabled. So exactly. You, you have the ability to really go in and dial in yeah. more features than the knobs allow you to. Yeah. And you know, you know, we talked about the fact that that, that the 2290 was pristine, and that's the algorithm that's built around that. But over the years, we refined it and we made it cooler because it started adding all these possibilities to you know, create tape echo sounds, to create analog sounds. So all the sounds you heard here today are obviously coming from the flashback triple delay, so it can do all these things. Um, and the latest thing that we've done in that sense is doing the tone print stuff, which allows you to basically dial in the sounds exactly what you know, exactly the way you want it, and that's what Russell is kind yeah. of doing here yeah. while we're talking. Is <laughs> he's kind of switching between different sounds to kind Making of showcase sure settings. Up. Yeah. So you guys have teased me with it long enough. I want to see what this thing is made yeah. of. I All want right. to see what's you know what makes it tick. So tell me a little bit about the flashback triple delay. So flashback triple delay, pretty amazing. It's three completely separate delay engines. Uh, you'll notice there's a toggle switch on the pedal itself that toggles between those three delay engines. So you can create three completely different types of delay. Um, so it doesn't, you could create different subdivisions. I mean, you've got 11 subdivisions to choose from, so you could pick, you know, any of those, any of those 11 for any of those three delays. So you could have a quarter note delay in position one, dotted eighths in position two, and, you know, eighth note triplet in position three, or a reverse delay, or whatever, whatever you can come up with. And you can run them all either into each other in series, there's a seri series uh, parallel switch. So you can, basically what that is, is running, you know, if you've got two pedals and you run one into the other, that's in series. If you run them in parallel, it's splitting your guitar signal and running into both of them at the same time. Uh, that's a little tricky of a setup. I mean, you've got to split your guitar signal, run it into two pedals, and then and deal with other phasing issues and all kinds of stuff. With the triple delay, it's got a, a switch on it, like toggle switch. It's really easy to run either in serial or parallel. So, pretty cool. So, um, it really does open up you know, a ton of possibilities. So, the one that I've got dialed up here right now is we're talking, you mentioned in the intro, Hank Marvin. Um, I mean, that's going way back, and I'm using the, the triple delay again to do some older type stuff, but I'm going to stack a couple of different delays. So the first delay is like a really kind of quick slap backy type of delay. So uh,
stacking two different types of delays there. One was a slightly longer feedback, so repeats. And, and you'd need, in the past, two completely separate pedals to do that and a way of splitting your signal to run them both at the same time. So all that can be done really quite easily in the, on the And ways to deal with phase cancellation and... You don't have to worry yeah. about it, yeah. And signal, you know, your signal being degraded because of how much stuff you're running it through. And right, sure, yeah. So, you know, I, now I know I can stack three delays with that. We, as a guitar player, which I'm not, but as a guitar player, why would you want to stack three delays? What advantage does that give you? You can basically say it's just a way to get some more cool sounds. So, for example, what Russell just played now, you wouldn't get that sound unless you know unless you had two delays at the same time. Um, so, so obviously stacking stacking three delays, which is the maximum that you can do, will give you even more different creative sounds. So, I mean, I think the best way it's it's kind of tough to describe what it does because it's it's really a, a sound thing. So, coming up with a totally different totally different way of using a multiple delay is what uh, Brian May used uh, when he did his classic uh, solo, uh, little solo um, show during the uh, Queen concerts, where he's having a dry guitar on one side and then he's having one delay in one amp on the other side and another delay on the other side. So he can actually, you know, kind of play in harmony with himself, mm -hmm. so to speak. I don't know if you're ready for that yet, Russell, or... In a couple seconds. Okay, <laughs> so, and this is actually something that uh, I think Brian May was actually the one that kind of got the credit for it, but um, but Freddie Mercury actually used that on uh, on some pretty cool uh, Queen tracks even before that. So that's another example of using these kind of dual delays or triple delays to get some sounds that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, and last but not least, it's sometimes you want to use delays to get a this kind of rhythmic feel, but sometimes you also want to use delays to get just some kind of atmosphere around your sound. You want to basically spread it out a little more. Um, and John Petrucci has been one of our endorsees for a long time. And I, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about tone and sound and he's been using the 2290. Um, and at some point he switched to flea flashback delays to get different sounds. Mm -hmm. So when we did the original flashback X4, which has three presets, I just sent him a mail saying, you know, you got to check this out. You can ditch your three flashbacks and then you can, you know, you can put in a flashback X4 instead. And the only answer I got back was, yeah, that doesn't work because I can only have one preset on at the same time. And I typically use at least two at the same time, not to get these rhythmic things, but when you add more than one delay at the same time, it almost becomes like a reverb. It kind of blends together in this really, really nice way um, that works great for solos or for clean stuff where it's not a matter of just having this kind of, you know, very strict rhythm. You just want this kind of nice soup of delay going mm -hmm. on at the same time. Right. So that's another way of using it. Yeah, and going back to, to the Brian May example, I mean, Brian's a genius with, with delays and with guitar sounds in general, but uh, he stacks a lot of uh, harmonies in the studio. So how do you do that live? I mean, that's a, that's a tricky thing to do live. So he kind of figured a way of using delays I mean, rhythmically, uh, but a lot differently than the way the Edge used to use delay. So, so what he would do is he'd, he'd have his dry signal, then he would have a repeat of his exact same signal one more time, and that's where the 2290 came in handy because he wanted an exact replica of his guitar tone. So you'd hit a, you'd hit a note once, it would repeat once, and then he would use a completely second delay, so two 2290s running in parallel, to give it a, third de a second delay the same distance apart from the first one. So, so if I play my, my first, so you hear there's one delay after that. So, so it, it's giving me exactly what, and you think, wow, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. So I could, so I could time it so I can actually start building my harmonies. So you can do things like, uh, Pretty cool. So that's just adding one delay. If I wanted to add a second one where the triple delay comes in handy, I'll turn on two delays at once. So one is the first one was set for 800 milliseconds for anyone, you know, keeping a score <laughs> at home. The second one will be at 1600, so exactly the same amount of time apart. So now you'll hear. So now there's two repeats after. So if I played the same thing. Uh, And 
Brian would basically you know, overdrive and be like. A... It all makes sense. Yeah. Now. Awesome. It yeah. makes a little bit more sense now. And the funny thing is actually. Around, uh, we have a Brian May tone print for Corona Chorus out already. When we did that tone print um, around a year and a year and a half ago, um, we actually did a, we wanted to do a delay tone print as well because Brian is using a, another TC product to create exactly that sound. But the problem was that we didn't have a delay pedal that could actually do that. So we've been sitting on that tone print for quite a while and it's actually going to be released quite soon and it's exclusively for the flashback triple delay. So you can get exactly what Russell is just doing yeah. now. That's yeah. awesome. And and it really, when I heard you start to put the delays together, it kind of made sense, and it kind of I started to hear mm -hmm. that Queen tone, you know. And, yeah. And it's it's very apparent once you start to put them together. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's a really cool thing that uh, Brian came up with. And you know, we're talking about all these classic sounds, and I think it's a great way of kind of understanding and and you know, kind of visualizing, uh, you know, what what it actually does having two delays at the same time or three delays at the same time. But really the master of that is David Gilmore. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who, you know, if you think of one guy who's been using multiple delays to be super creative and create possibly some of the, you know, the coolest riffs in, in rock history, he's the guy to, to, to go to. And he was using an old Benson Echo Rec, which had three engines, um, and three different uh, delay heads, so he could actually do multiple delays at the same time. And Flashback Triple Delay is actually designed so that we can get all the same variations or combinations of, of heads as the as the old Benson Echo Rec. Uh, and I've been in contact with his tech over the last year or so, making sure that we could actually duplicate all those sounds. And he's trying it out now. I have my fingers crossed that he'll start using it. We, we don't know that yet, but um, but at least it's possible with that unit with Triple Delay to recreate all those great old uh, David Gilmore sounds. Yeah, so do you want to give it a shot? We'll do we'll do on live. Yeah. So excuse me, because I might have to bend down a, a little bit and you know play with the pedal. But uh, so we'll do this live. I won't, these aren't any presets. So I'll turn on delay one. Let's pick um, let's take an analog delay. So what do we have here? I'm um, gonna make it a quarter note delay. So one of the subdivision. I'll keep it fairly tight. So I'll save that as preset one. Let's do that. So we'll move along into preset two. And this is the one that you'll probably notice. I'll get on the 2290 with modulation here. Give it a bit of, I'll find my tempo here. So this is where I'm turning to the subdivisions over to the dotted eighth mode. So. And you can kind of say, that, sorry, you can oh. kind of say that you know this, the subdivision is key to getting all these different rhythmic things because you can save each preset with a different subdivision. And when you then kick on the different delays and you tap the tempo, they kind of lock in, so that suddenly they follow the same tempo all of them. So this one, this third delay I'm going to put in, something completely different, analog with modulation. You can really hear that kind of warble in the yeah. wow and mm -hmm. flutter that we talked about earlier. And again, I'm going to use, um, actually for that, let's use a quarter note delay. So that should be pretty close. Let's start, we'll save that one, press and hold to save. So I just put my three delays in there. So here's the first two. So you might have heard that song a few times.
Well, I think it's really cool about that. If you're the only guitar player in the band, which I am a lot of the time, you can recreate the delays from the album because the album has, you know, uh, doubled guitar tracks, lots of overdubs, different delays. Um, so using the three delays, I can actually I can recreate all three that are on the record, so the dotted eighth and the uh, the quarter note delay for all the chords, and have it sound pretty close to the album, all on one pedal. So you know, we know that we can stack the three delays. Mm -hmm. uh, can you also use it as a looper, like like the Flashback X4? You can kind of use as a looper, or is this strictly a delay beast? This is strictly a delay beast. What we kind of set out to do was just create the ultimate delay pedal for guys who love to just nerd out on on delay. And as a guitar player, I, I, who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like if I was a, if I were actually a guitar player, I could sit there and play with that thing for hours. Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, we've we've shown some of the more traditional classic songs that you you know. The way you use uh, multiple delays at the same time, but this can do so much more. Um, this is really, you know, the, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can get out of this because you can stack all these different delays. You can add reverse delay if you want to. And another thing you can do that's really, really cool is you mentioned the tone print technology earlier, and the tone print technology basically allows you to dial in other sounds that delays. So you can actually you can actually create a chorus tone print and store that to one of the presets. So this means that it actually becomes almost like a multi-effect. So if you want to, you could have two, two of the presets, or two of the engines do delay, and then one use that as a chorus, and then you can actually have chorus and delay on at the same time. So from a creative point of view, it really opens up a ton of different possibilities. Mm -hmm. So one example of that is, uh, is what John Petrucci is using, right? Sure, yeah, so, and, and we wanted to beam something in, because you mentioned earlier, if the tone print aspect was still was still available, and it is. Yeah. So, so I'll just grab my phone. We all here. love tone print. I mean, yeah. tone print is, is awesome, and that's why you guys are putting it yeah. in your pedals. So now, um, yeah, it's a, the, the app is free, yeah. available for iOS yeah. and Android, and it's as simple as uh, as this. As uh, that. You could grab your phone. Um, you'll you'll see when you draw when you pick up the tone here when you find John's sound, you'll find uh, beam to pedal. Simply push that, hold it over your pickup, and you'll hear a. 1990s dial-up sound, yeah. like we're, we're getting on the internet yeah. here in the 90s. <laughs> and, the, and the pedal flash there, I don't know if you guys caught that on the camera, but the pedal flash, and it would put John's um, delay sound in here. Yeah, it's a really nice type of sounding delay. If I wanted to um, exactly do what Tor was mentioning before, is use a triple delay as almost like a multi-effects unit. So uh, in uh, tone print one, let's say I just wanted to, uh, yeah, let's put in a bit of chorus and turn back, turn John Petrucci's delay back on, play the same thing, but now I've added a bit of flange, a flange pedal before it, if you will, so. So the way I see it is, you know, this is just the most versatile delay pedal on the market. You can use it to get all these classic sounds that we all know and love, but it's equally great for all these, you know, the young guys who want to create their own unique new sounds. You get the three delays that you can stack and pretty much do whatever you want with, and you have the tone print editor to basically customize it exactly the way you want to. Not to mention real estate on pedal boards is, at, you know, at a premium. Yeah. So if you could take... In, in a smaller box and be, have the ability to have three delays, that's huge because it saves you space on your pedal board. Yeah. You know, the, the heavier the pedal board, the more weight you've got to carry, the more you're taxing on your back. You exactly. You always get, all these things are things that we have to consider. Yeah. <laughs> and so it really is the kind of pedal where I think you, you've got to try it out because the possibilities are just, it's the kind of pedal where you start working with it, you suddenly realize, oh, I've never been able to do anything like that before unless you actually had three delay pedals that you started tweaking around with. Well, I instantly noticed that as he was dialing in the Gilmore sound. It was like, here we go, twist a knob, touch this, boom, there, my preset's set. Mm -hmm. It was, it's 
easy because it's, you know, if you want to get into the tone print stuff, you can. But it seems like it's got enough power just right out of the oh, box yeah. that you, you may not even need to dive into the tone print unless you really, you know, you really start to understand the effect and want to really, you know, fine tune your, your tone. It's a, exactly, it's a really good point because, you know, it's, it's a tricky balance having something that does so much but at the same time, we really want to keep all our pedals simple and easy to use because we know guitar players, and myself included for sure, I mean, I like being able to just take a pedal, put it on my pedal board, and, you know, turn it on, put everything at 12 o'clock, and great, get a great sound. And that is really what Flashback Tool Delay is also about. It's ease of use, even though it does so much stuff. And some old school guitar players, they don't want to plug their pedal into a computer, like nope. you say. They want to throw it on there, yeah. twist some knobs, yeah. you know, yeah. flip some switches and make it happen. Are we ready for Q and A, or do we have anything else we want to we want to highlight? No? I think that's pretty much it. So I just want to you know just want to say to people that you know they're in stock now. At, at you can find them at Guitar Center yeah. or GuitarCenter.com. Yeah. Exclusively. Exclusively at Guitar Center. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. We're going to go ahead and open it up. Um, what's the longest available time for delay on the Flashback Triple Delay? And can I make some Robert Fripp style multi head loops? Um, the maximum delay time is seven seconds. Okay. So, as long as you keep within that uh, that time that time frame, yes, you can do that. Um, and the cool thing is actually that as long as you use a 2290 type sound where there's no degradation or no change to the EQ, if you set the uh, feedback to exactly 100%, it actually works as a looper. It's going to repeat the uh, the delay forever without adding or subtracting to, to the delay. So it's just going to stay the same forever and ever and ever. Not to mention seven seconds is kind of a long, you know, it's a long time. That's a long time. Uh, you may, may, not, may not think it is, but it's a long time. Um, so I think we have the winner of the trivia contest as well. But before we get into that, you know, if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, ask, ask the questions in chat. Um, you know, when we're using that, and we, all, we went over 11 subdivisions. You can put one subdivision on each layer, correct? Yeah. On each yeah. kind of, um, I don't know what you would call it. Yeah, preset. Or, preset. Yeah. Um, are you able to combine multiple subdivisions, or is it just one? In, there's on actually quite a, there's like four of the subdivisions are actually dual delays. So, if you, so that's a, inside each, inside each delay engine, there's actually the possibility of having two delays running at the same time. So if you wanted to go absolutely crazy, you could have two delays on each of the three presets, stack those together, so that's actually six delays going on at the same time. I never tried that. I don't know how it sounds, but, but that's mm -hmm. actually a possibility, yes. And yeah. so that kind of leads me into our, uh, our trivia question was how many subdivisions are within the pedal. We, mm -hmm. we revealed it through uh, as we were going through, but the answer is actually 11. Yes. Yes. 11 subdivisions. Um, and Aaron... Sajaka, maybe? C-Z-A-J-K-A -A is the last name. You are the winner of the pedal. All we right will there. figure cool. out how to get this bad boy out to you. Make sure you get your contact information to info at drumchannel.com. If we have any other questions, send them on through. Uh, the chats should be available on the Drum Channel site and on the Music Mentor site. Um, so if, if anything else you want to highlight, maybe that we kind of skimmed over that I think would be important. I think one of the things um, we talked about the tone print stuff um, is that it is something we keep developing and adding more and more to. So a lot of the sounds that uh, that Russell were playing, so for example the um, the Andy Summers Police stuff, mm -hmm. is actually another artist we added. Uh, we haven't added yet, but he's actually gonna be on the uh, on the tone print roster soon. So the sounds that you heard uh, right. when. Uh, when Russell was playing, so, are actually tones that that uh, Andy dialed in himself. So, the, you know, that's the, the great thing, and you touched on that with tone mm. print is you have all of these settings available to you. You can yeah. share them with your friends, and it kind of gets that whole social aspect. Yeah. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about, because I, I remember when you guys first came with Tone Print a yeah. couple years back. Um, tell me a little bit about some of the changes, and now pretty much the entire arsenal of pedals is Tone yeah. Print enabled. I mean, when we, the original idea for this came when we designed the first original batch of Tone Print pedals. And 
we wanted to design some really simple pedals that were easy to use, but at the same time, we wanted to give the users the possibility, if they wanted to, to kind of dig a little bit under the hood. So you can kind of say that now we're at a point where there's like three stages to the tone print pedals. So the first stage is for the guys who just want a great sounding pedal. So you take a flashback triple delay and you put it on your pedal board and there's tons of different cool sounds and you have, don't have to do anything to kind of tweak it. If you want to do a little bit more, then we have this complete library of sounds that have been dialed in by great guitar players. So we mentioned a bunch of them already. Uh, other guys are you know, Robin Ford, um, uh, Steve Morse, John Petrucci, Paul Gilbert, which we've done some stuff with before, Steve Vai. All these different ga great guys have really made what you can call signature pedals that you can load into your own pedal. Um, so that's the second layer. And then the last layer, if you really want to geek out and basically become a pedal designer yourself without having a soldering iron, you can actually download the free tone print editor which gives you the same tools that all these artists have been using to dial in their tones. Now you can use that yourself to create your own unique sound. And make your own pedal, essentially. Ex exactly. Custom yeah. delay and pedal it is or... really making your own pedal because you have access to all these different parameters. But on top of that, you can also decide what the knobs do and what the range is. So you can, for example, if you have a delay pedal and you go like, I don't, I don't need the delay time. I always use 400 milliseconds you can actually reassign that knob to something else that you might find more useful. Or you can decide that you want the range of the delay time knob to go from 100 milliseconds to 600 milliseconds, and at the noon position I want it to be 400. You can actually do that with the editor. So it really is designing your own pedal. Yeah. So um, the next question we got, and we kind of already asked this one, um, does it have a looper? I think we already just said no, yeah. but you said you could make it so the feedbacks were 100%. Kind of almost? It's it's a, it's a little... Uh, the, the, the other question was... The, the Robert Fripp, yeah. Yeah, the Frippertronics, and that's yeah. how he used to do, he'd set really long delay times and then play against them. And, and yeah, to answer that question, you could do that, you know, was, it, it sounds like if somebody's into Robert Fripp, which I love Fripp, he's awesome, you're probably going to be cool with getting into the editor and making multiple head tape loops yeah. um, and using really long delays to do it exactly like Robert did. So yeah, you, you, could, you could definitely do that. You'd need to crack the editor open and dig right in. It would take and, some opening up the hood there, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I think the main thing would actually just be to make sure that the feedback goes to exactly 100%. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing, I never thought of that before. It's actually a really good question because the thing is, if you had, when you have three of these engines at the same time set identical, you can actually, it almost becomes like a um, three layers of looping at the same time. So you can turn on and off different loops if you set them to exactly the same timing. And you can actually play stuff and then you can take something out. If you turn off one of the, uh, one of the engines, you take that part out of the loop. So it gives you a lot of creative uh, possibilities. Um, does the tap tempo update a delay or preset when that delay or preset is turned off? No, it doesn't. We thought long and hard about whether we wanted it that way. I mean, there's basically two opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's one where the tap tempo only engages the active delays, and there's one where the tap tempo in, is, is basically ruling all delays, even if they're off. And what we decided to do was that it's only the active delays that it's governing, or that it's, it's changing the delay time on, because what we thought was, if you want to have, for example, Russell played the uh, Hank Marvin example where he did the, uh, the little slapback and then the longer one. If you wanted to have a slapback in one of the engines, as soon as you start tapping a slow tempo, it would then change the slapback to something that you know, wasn't useful for that. Um, so that's why we decided to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I, I feel you know, if you, it just gives you a little bit more control. Yeah. So with all these different things that you can run effects into each other, you can run them in series or parallel, you could have one set up as a flange, one set up as a vibrato, and another as a reverse delay. Like, who knows what somebody's going to come up with out there. So what we're kind of hoping is that 20 years from now we'll be talking about something that's been created really cool with something that we haven't even figured out yet with this pedal. That, it's, it's really versatile enough to be able to do that kind of thing. It's and like really we talked cool. about, it's, you know, nobody's really done it before. It's kind of a yeah. revolutionary yeah. thing. So yeah. the, the possibilities are endless. Yeah. You know, right. Who knows where it goes from here. So um, uh, last question that we have is, can I have a MIDI time clock set the tempo and use the expression control for feedback at the same time? So, so people are really thinking outside the box. Yeah, yeah. That's and exactly, that's what great I love. Question. And it's, it's funny, yes. um, some of the guys at TCU who are into more noise rock and indie type stuff, they love this pedal. They, you know, they sit geeking out in our little studio all the time trying to come up with new cool sounds. But getting to the question, yes you can. So there is a MIDI clock on the, uh, 
on the unit and it's going to rule all the delays all the time. So even when the delays are off. So that's one way of doing that. Um, and the expression pedal is there as well. And you can assign the pedal to control whatever parameter that's on the knobs. So delay time, feedback, uh, mix. So if you want to have it just control the feedback, you can totally do that. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely possible. Yep. Well, guys, I appreciate your time. Tor, I know you made quite the journey to get here. And Russell, I'm <laughs> well, sure it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just a hop, skip, and a jump. So you know, yeah. thanks for all you guys. Thanks, TC, for you know, putting this all together. Drum Channel for controlling all the production. And everybody out there for watching. This has been a Music Mentor Series online class. Thanks for joining us. Have fun. Thank you.